Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same web website where you registered. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Fort Hayes State University. Take it away. Hello everyone, my name is Katie Heineman and I am an admissions counselor here for Fort Hay State University. Fort Hay State University is located in the middle of the state of Kansas. It's approximately four hours from Kansas City if you head on I-70 West. Fort Hay State University is the correct size for you. We have about 4,500 students on campus about 7,000 on our FHSU online and 4,500 in our international partnerships. This means that our class sizes range from 20 to 25 students and we have a 17 to one student faculty ratio. Fort Hayes State has over 60 different majors. They range from nursing to health and human performance, business, education, and all things in between. Everything is very hands-on here at, at Fort Hayes State University, and we encourage everyone to come out and visit to make sure that we have the right major for you. Me personally, I did communication studies and have a minor in accounting, and currently I'm working on an organizational leadership master's degree. Fort Hayes State University does have the lowest tuition rate in the state of Kansas. For in-state Kansas residents, we're looking at 4,500 or $5,449.20 for tuition. This is for 30 credit hours for a year. If you cut it in half, that'd be 15 per semester. And we solely base ours upon how many hours you're taking. Room and board is for a room in our McMindus Hall with the open access meal plan. And our books and supplies is approximately $606 a year. This would make your total cost of $14,429.20 for in-state Kansas residents. For those students who may be touching Kansas and are part of our contiguous states, meaning Oklahoma, Nebraska, Colorado, or Missouri, you're looking at having a contiguous state rate. For that, you guys would see that you, for 30 credit hours a year, it'd be $7,523.10. This again is for $30 or 30 credit hours for a year. Halfway through would be 15. Um, and so if you cut that in half, that's how much you're paying per semester. Room and board stay, stays exactly the same. McMindus Hall, open access meal plan. Books and supplies is also the same at 606 um, on average per year. That would make your total cost $16,503.10. So if you notice, it's pretty close to the Kansas, um, in Kansas uh, resident. We also have a really cool scholarship opportunity for students. Um, we look at your ACT and your GPA. The ACT is super scored. So if you guys, you know, do really, really good in science one time and then maybe really not so great the next time, we'll still take that highest science score and match it with all the other highest scores that you had. So your super score really helps you out when it comes down to time to look at that ACT. We also will look at that GPA. We will look at your six semester transcripts, seven semester transcripts and eighth we will see which is the highest of the three. It is your un, it's your cumulative GPA over those three different sem, um, semesters that we look at. If you're wondering what kind of scholarship you might be available for right now, go ahead and um, hover over that QR link and you'll be able to see what your um, scholarship might be. We do have an estimator available for you. We have our highest one called the Tiger Pride Scholarship, which is 3750. This is going to be for the full year. Same thing with our Victor E scholarship, Black and Gold scholarship, and Hayes City scholarship. It's for a full year of either 1500, 2000, 2750, or 3750. You can keep it for the four years that you're here as long as you maintain a 3.3 grade point average. We will also stack any scholarships. So if you're able to fill out scholarships from your high school, go ahead and do that, and we will stack everything together. 
We also have a wide variety of places that you can live on campus. Incoming freshmen normally live in our first two um, res halls that you see on there, McMindus and Victor E. Village. Victory Village houses our learning communities. A learning community is a group of 14 to 28 students. They either have the same hobbies or they're in the same major. They're able to take two classes together in the fall, two classes together in the spring. This just kind of helps people if maybe they're not sure what exactly they would want to do, or if they're like dead set on becoming a nursing major, say we have our Nightingale Power, which is one of our learning communities. They do get to take junior and senior level classes their second semester of freshman year as um, part of that learning community, which is really great. Also, if you live on campus, you get free Wi-Fi, free cable, a free movie channel, and laundry is all free here on campus as well. We also are division two, so we play thing, people like Missouri Western, Missouri Southern, um, a couple schools in Nebraska, Emporia, Pittsburgh, Washburn, all games, if they're on campus, are free for students. So if you're able to enjoy it, I tell people all the time, make sure you head to any game that you can that's on campus. We also have over 120 clubs and organizations. The one that we show here is our eSports clubs. You are able to get scholarships for joining this club. If you're not, if we don't have the club that you want to, that you want to be in, you can create your own club by getting five people and a faculty staff member, and then you can make your own. If you're, if possible, we would like for you to schedule a visit with us. We are doing in-person visits as well as virtual visits. So please feel free to contact us to get that opportunity available for you. Lastly, we just wanna show you our contact information and please let us know if you need anything else. Thank you guys. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Oklahoma City University. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Jalen Jackson. I, I'm an admissions counselor at Oklahoma City University. Oklahoma City University is a liberal arts university located in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City. Um, we are a private university, so we don't have any difference in our in-state and out-of-state tuition. Our undergraduate student population sits around 1,600, and we do have students from all over the world. We have a United Methodist affiliation, but there is not a requirement for students to um, be in line with that United Methodist religion. Uh, so academics, we do have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and our average class size sits around 17. As you can see, 78% of our faculty hold the highest degree in their field. And so the great thing about being at OCU is that you have faculty that really care about you. They're invested in your success. Um, and so academically, uh, you have someone there to really invest and spend time and make sure that you're on the right track. Also, um, so here are some highlights from different programs. So OCU Science Studies Benefit science students benefit from 85% acceptance rate into medical, dental, and PA school, um, and then also biomedical research graduate schools. And then all of our faculty in the business school um, hold the highest degree in their area. 100% of, of the School of Religion graduates who apply to graduate school um, or seminary school are accepted. Our business school is ranked in the top 4.5% of business schools in the world. Um, and our nursing school was ranked number one in Oklahoma and in the top 50 best nursing programs um, in 2020. So all students, regardless of major, have the option of tacking on these additional programs. So we have our pre-professional tracks and it's an emphasis in the area to help prepare students who are applying to graduate school. We have our minors, all students, regardless of their major are allowed to add on a minor if they're interested in that, the best way to do it is to just talk with their academic advisor. And we also have certificate programs in child advocacy, Christian education, um, global mission nursing, nonprofit leadership, and youth ministry. So we are also a very big performing arts school. Our Bass School of Music hosts more than 250 performances each year. So as a freshman, um, attending OCU right from the get-go, you have tons of opportunities to get out there and perform. 
We have 90 plus dance alum who have performed on national or international tours. And Oklahoma City University is one of the uh, top 10 most represented universities on Broadway. So if that's one of your goals, Oklahoma City is great for that. And then our theater program puts on the most undergraduate performances of any university um, in the US. So student experience. We have over 80 plus student-led organizations on our campus. And then if there is a student organization or a club that you're interested in starting and we don't have it at OCU, you have that option to go ahead and create it yourself and get it going. For our performing arts students, we have professional partnerships with the Oklahoma Children's Theater, Lyric Theater of Oklahoma, and the Oklahoma City Ballet. And then for our seniors and the performing arts majors, we do have showcases in New York City, Dallas, Chicago, and Los Angeles. For our nursing students, we have over 70 clinical sites um, where they're gonna practice their skills. 25% of our students are involved in Greek life. We do have study abroad options and an on-campus gym, and then also plenty of intramural options for students who are interested in sports, but maybe not playing at the collegiate level. We have over um, 69 championships and counting here at OCU, and we are in the NAIA division. Uh, we have 22 varsity sports, and for students who are interested in athletics, there's an easy way to fill out a recruit me form, and we can drop that link in the chat later. So some general information on applying to our university. So you'll want to have a 3.0 GPA and a 22 ACT, or be in the, have a 3.0 and fall within the top 35% of your class rank. If you don't meet the, these criteria, it's okay. Um, we do have a test optional pathway and we'll do more of a holistic review um, where, where you'll want to submit additional recommendation letters um, and the following items that you see listed here on the screen. So we do have several scholarship opportunities at OCU. Um, the first one, or I guess the most common one are the freshman academic and freshman departmental scholarships. As you can see here, they're based off of your GPA and test score. We do accept super scores at OCU and seniors have until July 31st uh, of their senior year to submit new test scores for updating those scholarships. And then we also have talent scholarships for students who are going into the performing arts. Um, and these scholarships are based off of the audition. In addition to those scholarships, we also have competitive scholarships. Uh, the amounts range. We have up to full tuition scholarships that are offered, and there is not a separate application for any of these scholarships. You'll apply to these scholarships with your OCU application. So if you have additional questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, this is my contact information and then social media information on the side there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Drury University. Hi, everyone. Let, uh, my name is Katie. I'm an admissions counselor at Drury. Let me get um, my PowerPoint shared, which is always the most fun part. I'm sure it's not awkward at all to watch me figure this out. Um, hi, again, my name is Katie. I'm an admissions counselor at Drury University. Drury is a private liberal arts four-year college in Springfield, Missouri. If anybody's from Kansas City or St. Louis, um, it's about two and a half, three hours, maybe four hours for St. Louis, either way. Um, so I love, I am also an, an, an alumni from Drury. I loved going to Drury. Uh, it was a great experience, but I don't need to gab about that. So you guys can all probably read this screen, but I'll go over a little bit with you. It's kind of our cheat sheet for our things we like to brag about. We have 22 NCAA teams. We have a lot of different sports and we have them posted on the website as well. Um, a hundred percent of students participate in service projects. So like right in freshman orientation, you're already going to have some volunteer hours under your belt, which is awesome. And you get acclimated to Springfield that way. 99% um, of our graduates who are, who, so 99% of our graduates have jobs or are in professional or medical school um, or grad school of any kind um, six months after graduation. Um, we have over 70 plus programs of study, zero teaching assistance. Everyone that's teaching you is the best in their field that we have to offer. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. We have about 1400 total students on campus undergraduate. So we're a very small university. Um, we are consistently ranked as one of the best universities in the Midwest. Um, and sometimes they even say like 
best value, which kind of makes us sound like a Sam's Club. Um, but really what that means is we offer a really, really good private education, but for not a lot of money like they would in kind of the East Coast. Um, and then we have about an average class size of 19. Um, and then we can talk about applying here in a bit. So I'll move on. Um, I do want to talk about what sets Drury apart from all other schools, because I could sit here and tell you that our dorms are incredible and our food is great and all these things. And Though that is true, um, I think what sets Jury apart is my Jury Fusion or your Jury Fusion, depending on the side you're on. Uh, so what that means is you, it's the way that we've tackled um, gen eds. So for liberal arts schools, there are going to be classes that you have to take that aren't specifically for your major. But the reason we do that is because we want you to explore other studies and we want you to look at what you're passionate about through different lenses. Um, so the way that we do it tangibly is three certifiable life changing components. The main ones are um, the fusing your life and career credentials. And I'll talk about credentials in just a second. It'll make sense. Um, and then you also have real world experience and life changing mentorship. So first and foremost, the credentials um, are what the name we've given to majors, minors and certificates. So certificates is really what puts us apart from other schools. You have to have a major. So you have to be a bio major, a fine arts major, all these different things. Um, but then you also have to have a certificate and certificates. I like to think of them as like less time consuming than a minor, but more specific based on what you want to study or what you're interested in. And then your final, cred final credential can be a major, a minor, or a certificate. So the experience that we can offer you um, is just a lot of hands-on learning. You'll get an internship, you'll get to do research at Drury. Um, we can get you set up with even like paid research projects and different things like that. Uh, a lot of leadership. Um, and honestly, a lot of times our students leave having published articles and things like that. Um, Life-changing mentorship comes from not only our advising in the Compass Center, but also your faculty will be your advisor as well. So when you're taking classes and you think this person's really cool and you vibe with them really well, you can ask them to be your advisor and they can help you um, get your classes set up, figure out what you want to do. Sorry, if you can hear my dog barking, she's very excited about this as well. Um, and then, oh, so I drew Diego and I formally apologize for my art skills. I didn't take any art classes at Drury. So, to explain fusion in a way that makes maybe makes more sense, this is Diego, he has weird feet. Um, and he wants to design buildings inspired by ancient temples and he loves Greek mythology and Comic-Con. So he probably loved like the those books about, you know, I don't know, the lightning thief. Um, so his major would be his five-year master's in architecture and his certificates could be Ancients Alive and Graphic Storytelling, where he actually will study things like Greek mythology, but then learn how to make an entire comic book with graphic storytelling. So by the time he graduates, he can be, um, he can have a master's in architecture, be an architect, but then also draw in the things that he loves from other parts of his life to be really good at his craft. Um, Daisy has even weirder hands. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but she wants to work in the healthcare field as a physician, which are pre acceptance programs for med school. Unbelievable. If you're a med student, absolutely look into jury just because we're liberal arts does not mean we don't have incredible STEM um, majors. So she also plays soccer and is in the student council president. So her major would be bio or biochem with the pre-med track. So she'd be looking at maybe pre-acceptance programs for med schools. Um, and then her certificates could be holistic health and well-being and sports leadership. So she's not only studying to get into med school, but she's also getting to play soccer and study holistic health and well-being. So yoga and different things like that. And then learning how to be a real leader on the field. Um, all certificates, if any of those piqued your interest, or you might say none of them do, but I want to look at others, they're all found on our website, jury.edu. Please reach out and look at those. I love looking at them and just imagining, you know, if I go back to school, what it's going to look like. <laughs> um, it's also free to apply. It's completely free to apply, whether on our website or common app. We are test optional, which means a little bit different in every school. But what that means for us is we understand the ACT and SAT are for everyone. Um, and also sometimes you don't get to take it as many times as you wanted to due to COVID. So please write us an essay and we'll grade it on that same scale. And hopefully we can get you your scholarship, which is automatic academic scholarship when you apply. 10 to $20,000. Um, and then from there, we'll help you with activity grants and other ways of money. So we can really get you a very affordable, wonderful education. Thank you guys. Sorry, I rambled. I'll hit the chat. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Grand Canyon University. Hi, everyone. Let me get my presentation pulled up. My name, oh, oh.
My name is Hannah and I'm here with Grand Canyon University today just to introduce myself a bit. I am from Wichita, Kansas and I went to GCU myself. I got my degree in biology from GCU and I'm currently getting my master's in biology with GCU as well. So I have a lot of great firsthand experience and if you guys have any questions about what it was like being an out-of-state student or anything like that, I am happy. So please just drop me a message if you do have any questions. Um, and first, here are just a few quick facts about us. We are located out in Phoenix, Arizona, out in Western Valley there. Um, and we are a private Christian university. We have over 20,000 students on campus. So we are fairly large for a private Christian school. Um, and a couple of really important facts are for you to look at these right here. We don't have out-of-state tuition, which is really something that drew me to GCU as a student. Um, and another way that we help our students keep costs low is that 75% of our graduates are able to graduate in over in less than three and a half years. So that's helping you save some money as well. Um, and our application process is completely free. Um, if you're interested, I can send you the link. Just send me a message as well. And then on top of that, our college campus was actually ranked the seventh best by Niche. So, and I will show you a couple of pictures of that here in a minute. But first we can talk about academics. We have nine different colleges here at GCU and over 200 academic programs. So I don't have time to get into all of them right now, of course, but here are just a couple that we offer. Um, and our most of our class ratios are at a 25 to one ratio. So although we do have over 20,000 students on campus, we're able to keep that ratio um, between students and professors really low. And that is because our school is focused on a, we are a teaching university and not a research focused university. So all of our professors are required to have a certain number of office hours each week. And um, you will be getting taught by your actual professor, not by a TA or someone like that. And again, that is because we are so focused on being a teacher university. As far as athletics, we are a division one university in the Western Athletic Conference. Basketball is our big sport here at GCU and our um, our mascot is the lope. So if you hear lopes up, that's what that is referring to. Um, and we do offer club sports and intramural sports as well. So if you're not quite thinking you wanna go that D1 level, we do have other options as well to help students play the sports that they love. On campus living, this was one of my favorite aspects of GCU being a student there. Um, to the left, this is an example of what one of our freshman dorms look like. And as a freshman, you're able to live on campus, off campus, um, it's entirely up to you. However, over 70% of our students do choose to live on campus just because of how nice our amenities are. Um, over here is what an example dorm might look like. So something that's really nice is you will only have to share a bathroom with one other person. We don't have any like bathrooms where you have to share with the entire hallway of your floor, or anything like that. So you just have one roommate and then in our apartments, which are also available for freshmen to live in, you would actually get your own bedroom and you'd have a kitchen area. So. And most of our dorm buildings, they have um, facilities such as a pool and a gym. Um, some also have mini grocery stores right there, but on campus, we have over 30 restaurants. So that's another reason why so many students choose to live on campus because we really have everything you need right there. As far as faith, like I mentioned, we are a private Christian school, but you do not have to associate with Christianity in order to come to GCU. Um, we don't have students sign a statement of faith, and we do offer chapel and um, other programs such as small groups. But again, those are completely optional. So if that's something you want to be a part of, then great, but there's no pressure at all. And now for cost. So our tuition is set at $16,500 per year, and that is for in-state and out-of-state students. And our tuition hasn't been raised in over 10 years now. So what you pay your freshman year is what you're gonna be paying for your next three years as well. And then with all of our other charges, you can see it'll total up to being around 27,000 a year. However, we do offer some great scholarships and our scholarships are based on either your GPA or your test score. So say you have a maybe lower GPA, but a higher ACT or SAT, you would qualify for that higher test score, which is something that is really awesome. 
Um, and we do offer an additional $4,000 scholarship for any students who attend a Christian high school. So if that is you, please contact me about that and I can give you some more information there. And then if you are interested in applying, these are our admissions requirements, 3.0 GPA or a 2.5 GPA and a 19 and 1000 SAT score. And if you're interested in GCU, one of the coolest things we offer is Discover GCU. Once you apply and are accepted to the school, GCU will actually completely pay for your flights to have you come out and visit our campus out in Phoenix. And you get to spend the night in our dorms and get a campus tour and really get the full campus experience. So if you're interested in that, again, you just have to apply and be accepted to the school. And here is my contact information. Please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Next we'll be hearing from Sacred Heart University. All right, thank you so much, Anna. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dara Kalaski. I am the Regional Director of Admissions for Sacred Heart University. Sacred Heart's a mid-sized Catholic university located in Fairfield, Connecticut. We are just an hour and a half outside of New York City and two and a half hours to Boston. So we're in this quintessential New England college town. We actually share the town with Fairfield University. So there's a lot to do in the area. Um, we are a residential campus. So most students do stay on campus during their time, um, but it's about an hour train ride to New York City on the express line. And we're also located in the third most concentrated area of Fortune 500 companies. So as all of our majors require at least one internship to graduate, all of those resources are readily available in our backyard. We're sort of a hybrid of liberal arts meets career education, meaning that we want you to have the opportunity to explore if you're undecided, most of our students do come in undecided on campus, um, but we don't want you to stray too far and have that um, opportunity to really enter into the job force or expose yourself to that higher learning that's much needed in a lot of programs these days. Of the 60 undergraduate programs that we do offer, 40 of which have an attached accelerated or combined graduate opportunity. So we're seeing about 40% of our student body come back for a grad program, given that they do get priority consideration in the grad process and could even qualify for some of those assistantships. So paying those master's years forward. Our most popular programs include anything in the health professions. We are top in state, top in top five in New England for our direct entry nursing program, uh, doctorate of physical therapy, occupational therapy, athletic training, um, but then the business, criminal justice, and psychology kind of range in our top five. Um, we're also, as I mentioned, a Catholic institution, but we have since become independent from the church. So there are no religious requirements for our students. I would say the big takeaway is our commitment to community service and civic engagement. Virtually everyone is involved in some level of community service. There are scholarships available for students considering that as part of their um, just sort of campus life. Um, and our campus ministry is actually run by a priest, rabbi and imam. So we have these really open dialogue conversations about intersectionality and how sort of current events are happening in the church itself. So nothing's required, but most certainly there if you wanna continue any level of practice. As I mentioned, Sacred Heart is in a pivotal growth phase right now. Uh, as much as we have those top accolades in the health professions, we're seeing success across the board. We're nationally ranked for our performing arts programs, our game design programs and community service. Um, and we were successful in that our, our career and professional development reported that this is the fifth year in a row we've had a 99% job placement rate within six years, six months, excuse me, six months of graduation. So students are leaving, they're getting those jobs, they're getting into those fields that they really are passionate about and making those changes in the local and global communities. So it's a really exciting time. And just to show you kind of the growth we've had on campus in the last 13, or in the last seven years, we've had 13 new buildings introduced to campus. Um, so we have new dormitories, new dining services, new academic buildings. Um, we are expanding our campuses across the board. Um, one of the big highlights I like to point out is our acquisition of GE's former headquarters, which is now home to our West Campus. This is now home to um, an 11,000 square foot makerspace, artificial intelligence lab, game design lab, cybersecurity opportunities. So my undecided engineers, this is a great place to be. Um, 
since this is a very new program and the head research scientist at Yale is now the department chair of engineering at Sacred Heart. So if you're looking for that hands-on experience as soon as you walk in the door where other programs might not have those same liberties, um, one of the big research projects to give you an idea is they're learning how to email taste. So it's a really exciting time to broaden your horizons there. And finally, I just wanna kind of go over our um, application process. Um, we are on the Common App. We are test optional and have been test optional for 15 years, um, even for our direct entry nursing program. We heavily um, look at your GPA, demonstrated interest, what you're involved in outside of school. We wanna to get to know who you are as a person. So the best way to um, ask more about the application process is to be in direct contact with me. Um, I'm actually based in Denver, Colorado. So I'm a little bit closer to you guys compared to where Fairfield is located. So I'm happy to work with you as you navigate the process and look forward to uh, hearing from you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Lastly, we'll be hearing from Texas A&M University. Howdy, how's it going, y'all? All right, let me share my screen really quick. Let's see. All right. Swap presenter view. Okay, are you able to see that? Yes, looks good. Excellent. So howdy, how's it going everyone? My name is Jawan Andrews. I'm a regional admissions advisor for Texas A&M University. So I just wanna start off by saying thank you all for coming out today to learn a little bit more about all of our universities. And so today I'm going to talk a little bit about what Texas A&M has to offer so um, I'm pretty sure I have a lot of leaders on this call today. And so I'm pretty sure you all are starting this, the college search and you're kind of wondering how does a and stack up in comparison to all of the other universities. So I'm going to start there today for the presentation. All right. So a and is ranked as the number one public university in Texas for research expenditures. And so um, when we're talking about that, if you look for a university that has a lot of resources dedicated to um, our students um, getting their, their feet wet in the field and also um, uh, expenditures for are uh, dedicated to getting faculty and staff that are have that research component uh, embedded in them, then a and is an excellent choice for you all. We're also ranked as the number one public university in terms of study abroad as well. And so all we really want our students to have that global perspective and understanding of different cultures. And so if you're looking for that, then a and is an excellent choice as well because we want to ensure that our students have that under their belt when they're looking for our universities, uh, looking for jobs after they graduate from Texas a and We're also ranked in the top 4% of uh, world university rankings. And we're also ranked as the best college town in Texas. So we're located in, in College Station, Texas, which is centrally located between four of the major cities in the state of Texas. And so that is uh, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston. So if you're looking for that, that weekend excursion, then Texas A&M and College Station is an excellent choice. Um, we're also one of the top public universities in the nation as well. Um, we were the first public institution of higher learning in Texas opened up in October 4th, 1876. We started off as an all-male military institution. So in order to come to Texas A&M, you had to be in the Corps of Cadets. But nowadays it is optional. And so uh, the Corps of Cadets remains a staple here at Texas A&M, but it is optional in order to come to Texas A&M. You do not have to be in the Corps of Cadets. Uh, we do have a 20 to one student to teacher ratio. And so, and also one thing I love to talk about is our first year student retention rate is 94.8%. And so we don't only want you to come to Texas A&M, we also want you to stay here as well. And so we have a lot of uh, resources dedicated to ensuring that our students not only come here, but also succeed as well. Uh, one of those is our Hullabaloo U um, first year experience cl class. And so that class really gives, gives you an um, understanding of what A&M has to offer. Um, but also shows you the resources that we have to offer as well. And so that has really shown a lot of great 
um, return uh, in terms of retention for our freshman students because they really get to uh, get engulfed in Texas A&M in that course. So whoop to that 94.8% uh, first year student retention rate. Um, we are the largest university in the country. So we do have over 71,000 students, you know, not too much. And so we do have 20% as well that are um, first generation students that are in there as freshman students. Uh, we do have $54 million uh, that was awarded to our latest income and freshman class in financial aid. So we do have that available as well. All right, so let's get into the weeds of what a and has to offer. So we have 10 academic colleges, um, anything ranging from the College of Engineering, which is the largest of its kind, to the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, which is the largest of its kind in the nation, um, to the Mays Business School, which is one of the top ranked business schools in the nation as well. Pretty much anything that you're looking for, more than likely we have. And so uh, when you're applying for admissions to a and you will have to indicate your first choice and your second choice major. If you're like me and you're a little bit indecisive, then I encourage you to head over to our Career Center website, which is careercenter.tamu.edu. That's careercenter.tamu.edu. And we have this amazing tool, y'all, that's called My Major. And so with the My Major tool, you can enter in any major that you're interested in, and it'll tell you a brief description of it, but it'll also go so far as to tell you the, um, the position, the company and also the salary that students have um, graduated a and and went on to get with that intended major. So you can kind of see the return on investment for majoring in that. So just be mindful of that. Um, here at a we are the home of the innovators, the game changers and the leaders of tomorrow. So that's what we're looking for in applicants to Texas a and So um, these are our Aggie core values, respect, excellence, leadership, loyalty, integrity, and selfless service. So that should be very apparent in your application because that's what we're looking for to continue to enhance our um, Aggie network and, and adding to our Aggie um, freshman classes. More stuff. We have University Honors, amazing program, indicate your interest on the application. We have a over 1,000 student organizations that have any Harry Potter, fan, Harry Potter fans. We have a Harry Potter club. We have a Quidditch team. So anything that you're looking for, more than likely we have. And if we don't, you can start your own organization. I encourage you all to get involved your freshman year. We have the Corps of Cadets. Um, we have amazing dorms here on campus. So if you're looking to stay on campus, I encourage you all your freshman year, always stay on campus. And so definitely check that out. We're offering virtual tours and also in-person tours. And stay connected, aggiebound.com uh, for counselors at admissions.tamu.edu slash counselors. And this is my contact information. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And I thank you all for coming out. And with that, thanks and gig them. Thank you. It looks like we have time for Q&A. So I just want to invite all of the reps on um, to just share what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And um, you can just answer in the same order that you presented in. Um, I would say that students should um, try to visit as many schools as they possibly can and don't limit yourself to just one school. You know, you need to figure out what's best for you um, and maybe find a school that works very right for you. And it could be one of the schools on the screen here. Hello. So my biggest piece of advice would be to reach out to current students or faculty and really um, don't be afraid to ask to do that during a visit. So definitely visit all the places that you can, but while you're there also see if you can speak to professors in the area that you're interested in studying in, see if you can talk to current students and really um, get more information on what it might be like to be a student there. My advice uh, actually feels a little silly, but it's just to apply. I think a lot of students are scared to apply. Maybe they think they won't get in or whatever it is, but you don't know until you do it. And also applying is how Drury then starts contacting you. 
So if you're like, oh, maybe, but I don't know, if you go ahead and apply, you'll get all that information that will send you right off the bat. Um, and even if it looks a little bit more expensive than in your price range, you might get a lot of financial aid and scholarships and things, and it can become very affordable very fast. My advice would be just to get out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, this is the one time in your life where you guys can really just up and move wherever you want, any part of the country. So um, there's so much to offer out there. And even if it is a little bit farther from home, or even if you want to stay closer to home, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But this is the one time in your life where you can really just up and go wherever you want. Um, so I would just encourage you guys to get out of your comfort zone and see what is out there for you. My piece of advice is um, just to really be in touch with your counselors. We're counselors first at the end of the day, and you can see that we are humans. Where it's not going to just be an automated process, as <laughs> might be uh, might be thought. Um, and I always say to to my students, it's okay to be really intentional about the process, um, and that includes letting us know if you've decided to go elsewhere. I know it it's helpful for us because as we're navigating our own internal goals, this is something that just does a nice little due diligence to say, hey, look, thanks so much for working with me. I've decided elsewhere and also you get less in your inbox so um it, we're here to help as much as possible and uh yeah you know happy to answer any questions across the board absolutely everything that they said is spot on uh, only thing i would add to that is try to visit campus i know we're in um, troubling times right now but I'm telling you all, it means the world. If you can actually go to campus and actually see yourself there, campuses will really sell themselves for you. And so if you can tour the campus in person or virtually, that'll work as well. Um, and ask any question that you wanna ask because we, we're really here to make sure that you go to college. That's our main goal is to make sure you go to college, whatever that means, wherever that uh, lands you is up to you. But the main thing is that you actually go to college and kudos to all of you all for um, seeking um, to go to college after high school. So yeah, do that. <laughs> awesome. It looks like we have time for another question. So just um, if everyone could share what their favorite event or tradition is that takes place on their campus. Um, for us, uh, I would say definitely our TGOF. It stands for Tiger Gear on Friday. Um, we are not in a very big place out here in Western Kansas. It just kind of gets a sense of feeling of connection with everybody. Um, that can be people on campus, people off campus. We get special discounts out on Fridays if you're wearing that tiger gear. Um, and it just, it just makes you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself. As far as OCU's tradition, I think my favorite would be midnight breakfast. So during finals week, students are encouraged to go to the CAF and have a midnight breakfast. So it's one swipe, you get to eat everything up until midnight. So if you're pulling in all night or doing finals, I think that's something that's really fun and uniquely OCU. I had a feeling, Carly, that someone was gonna have that one and that was gonna be my number one, but I have a backup, I knew it. Um, so we do an event and actually I put the link in the chat. Um, it's called Jury Bound and it's for our ad already admitted senior students that are considering coming to jury or already committed. Um, and it's the whole point is just to give you a whole day of what it would be like to be on campus and to live in Springfield. And so we take you bowling and there's, it's honestly like, it feels like you're being a big kid all day, but then you're also exploring college. So you feel the oldest and the youngest you felt in a while. Um, and it's super, super fun. Like I have won many an inflatable, like uh, obstacle course race. Uh, like I don't take it, the students, I don't care about, I know you're coming and I know I should be nice to you, but elbows. Yeah, it's a very fun event. <laughs> So this is a hard question for me. Um, GCU has so many fun events. We have a male um, beauty pageant. We have a lip sync competition, all kinds of stuff. But my favorite is probably just GCU basketball games. So we have what's called our student group is called um, the Thundering Herd. And these students, they actually will camp out in front of the arena for up to like four days before basketball games just to get the very best spot in the arena. So our students just love our basketball team. And I love being one of those students camping out and just getting the full experience um, cheering on GCU. So that's definitely my favorite memory. Uh, 
yeah, so for Sacred Heart, um, there's a few that stand out to me, but um, one of my favorites is at kind of the start of each semester or like any sort of like big event, they'll do like a procession of like bagpipers and our marching band throughout campus to kind of like wake them up for the day, especially before any big games since we're division one athletics too, and really kind of in encouraging students to kind of go out, support their, um, their colleagues and uh, things like that. Um, the big takeaway, like I said, is community service. And um, we host a series of events throughout the year. So we host our annual turkey drive, clothing drives throughout um, the entire year since Habitat for Humanity is our largest student run club. So I think those are the things that stand out most about our campus. And for a and um, make it quickly. Uh, the Aggie Ring is amazing for us here at Texas A&M, and so Aggie Ring Day is one of the most pivotal moments in an a and student's career, and also for us faculty and staff, just seeing our students achieve that milestone and that, them actually getting their Aggie Ring is one of the things that we really look forward to, so Aggie Ring Day is amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us, and thank you for sharing. Um, when you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recording at the same website where you registered. So thank you everyone. Bye.